you talking about? Oh, the plate is like this big. You got the bad luck. You can do hook. Hello, friends. Softball friends. Softball friends. Hello. So good to see you. How have you been? What have you been doing? I have a feeling they've been watching a lot of Netflix on the couch. That's yeah. what I have a feeling. Netflix, or maybe you've been watching Amazon. Faux Softball. Maybe you've been watching Chez's show. The Chez's show. I hope so. But I'm maybe so not. I'm so I feel so honored to have you in the studio today. Well, you're welcome. I walked in and I was like, "Oh my god, yep. Chess is here." Here I am. Here I am. I figured you missed me. You've been telling me for weeks, so I, did. I was like, "You know what? It's hard work holding down the fort all by yourself." Yeah, that's so what now... you tell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Allie, Allie Martinez from hey, where? Are you? Lake Jackson? No, I'm actually back in Austin right now. Oh, you're back in Austin. Yeah. When did you come back to Austin? Well, um, I came back, I think, a week or two ago. I don't know. It kind of all blends in together right now. Look at this. <laughs> right. The gang's all back. Yeah, the gang's all back together. And uh, we're very excited. We've got a terrific guest who is a technology <laughs> wizard. Savant. <laughs> I will say savant. Savant. Wow. Please welcome to the show Coach P Patty Gasso. How you doing, Patty? There she is. Why do you gotta do me like that? We just started. We just can we just get off on the right foot? Come on now. Look, I I credited you as a technology wizard. Well, shall I let everyone know that you're being extremely sarcastic? And <laughs> that comment is extremely sarcastic, <laughs> but I own it. I, I own it. So how, how have the? I'm going to start with this question. How have the Zoom calls been going with your team? Have you been able to frame um, them upright? You have the camera the right way. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, you're our yeah. favorite. You know that, right? Look, it all went well until I got on. Here's the deal, and then everything <laughs> went backwards. So, That's fine. That. You can you can blame me personally. I have I have no feeling hard feelings with that. Um, I'll own it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> The most important thing is that we're all here now. Yeah, we are all here and so excited to get to talk with you. And, um, you know, Big 12 announced that uh, football would uh, resume its season uh, this fall. Can you kind of tell us about um, Oklahoma's plan in terms of uh, reintegrating the students back into kind of normal life and, and what uh, softball looks like this fall? Uh Man, it is uh, a lot to talk about, that is for sure. So we obviously know we, everybody needs and wants football, but we need it. I mean, every university really needs it financially. So um, our leadership has been phenomenal. Our head coach has been phenomenal. And um, our players, our football players have been phenomenal. And then, then we gave them a six day break and things turned not phenomenal because of <laughs> yeah just you know getting out of the bubble so to speak so um this last week has been just really um man we are taking unbelievable precautions um so if i should be having a mask on right now while i'm talking to you in my own home just because that is how important they're talking about us being masked up is so I mean, I'm walking around wearing it, trying to get comfortable with it because it's going to be on throughout the entire day. And that's not something that I've been completely used to, but um, it is absolutely everything and what everyone's heard. Masking, social distancing and sanitizing. And um, so our coaching staff has really put our heads together and found out some you have been creative in ways of how we're going to do things, whether it's team meetings, um, practices. Um, every player is going to, of every team, is going to have their temperature checked every day. And if they come in with a temperature under 99.5, they'll get a green wristband that will allow them into our Student Life Center, you know, anything that, um, they need to get into. So it's it's diligent, it's time consuming, it's inconvenient, but um, at this point in time, if you want to play any sport, you got to give up and sacrifice. And if you can't, then you kind of don't deserve it. 
So that's what we're trusting is our athletes are going to sacrifice their social time and so that we can hopefully have a season, a fall at least, and then we'll, we'll know how to handle the spring. Uh, what are what have been some of the biggest challenges or changes that you faced when you're thinking about the 2021 season? That's a really broad question. You could go anywhere from recruiting to the measures you just talked about to a bubble, right? Like, what are, what are some of the biggest ones that you're facing right now? I think we're waiting to hear from other universities and whether they're even going to play, and if they do. Can they come? Can they travel? Will they travel on airplanes? If they can't travel on airplanes, how do I find someone else to be part of our tournament? Things like that. Um, personally, it's um, the amount of money that this is going to cost. You know, now if you're taking a bus, can you have two to a seat? If not, do we get two buses? Uh, how many people to a room? Right now, football's putting one guy in a room. Um, this, how we're going to handle this financially if we are told we can and can't do certain things. Parents coming in and wanting to see their kids play, are they going to be able to have time together? Probably not um, if we're trying to create this bubble. So it's going to be challenging for athletes, for coaches, and for families. Um, but, I mean, that's down the road, and we're already working on how that's going to look in the way of travel and so forth. But like I said, um, if you love this sport and you want to play so badly, we're going to have to sacrifice, and it shouldn't even be called a sacrifice. It's just the way our life temporarily has got to be, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. You know, I was reading a, a, a report that got put out this morning about D3 schools, obviously a completely different um, ball game that we're talking about, pun intended, everybody watching. Um, but uh, they were talking about how most, some people don't understand just how expensive the safety precautions are. I, the, the article that I uh, read, it's a half a million dollars. Uh, and then for D3 yeah. programs, they can't even afford that. Forget about it. They can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but you're talking about that cost. And just so somebody, ha you know, it's one report that I read from Front Office Sports. But so people can have an idea of how much you're talking about. It, it's a half a million dollars for, for, I think it was football specifically, to put in all the safety precautions that the NCAA is, is mandating. Um, so that's a, that's a real expense um, when it comes down to the financials. Um, so I, I can yeah. imagine that's a pretty hard thing to work through on your end. It is, and that's why it's so important that we do the right thing. So we certainly don't want to waste our money, um, you know, going through all of this and then someone do some kind of knucklehead move. And that's hard when you – it's one thing having an athletic bubble and trying to keep your, your uh, households together and things like that. So we're real strategic that way. But now you're bringing back – 20,000 non-athletic students that are in the mix now. So I know football has gone to all online classes. Um, our players are kind of in that hybrid mode where they're doing in-class and online. Um, so it's just, I mean, it, there's so much education that we have to give our athletes as to how to go about um, precautions in the classroom. You know, it's it's unbelievable, but again, absolutely necessary. What's it been like to see the experience of a student athlete and regular student experience change like that in a span of a year? Um, we're not there at, at the university, and I'm sure it's got a different feel to it. Can you kind of describe what it what it's like now? Uh, I'm not quite sure yet what it's going to feel like. Um, I know how anxious our players are to get back. So as we speak, our freshmen are moving into the dorms, but only one parent can come in with them. So you're missing that family connection and that big moment. You're kind of missing that. Um, but I've been seeing quite a few, um, well, look, I would not go into Target right now because it's full of sorority <laughs> girls. <laughs> we 
you are just so, I don't know, with girls, they're so excited. They just want to be close to each other. You know how we just yeah. like to talk and be close. And um, So there's a little bit of um, just light treading, you know, like you just, you're seeing people really trying um, to back away from each other and things like that. But I mean, our school, our classes start um, Monday. So I think we'll get a pretty good idea. But man, are we being, we have had multiple um, Zoom calls and things like that. And this whole next week, the first week of school, we're not doing anything except protocol. So bringing in a household at a time and saying, when you come to the field, this is exactly what we expect. When you go into the indoor, this is what we expect. When you um, are in the bullpen, this is what we expect. So there's a rule for about every step you take. And we just want to really make sure we put a lot of emphasis on that versus yippee, we're back. Let's go get your gloves. Let's, you know, get back into what we're doing. I, we will be over like that if we try to play that game. So um, we're just really taking it slow, making sure we all get it, we can follow it appropriately. And and um, I think once really the one month mark hits is when you can really start opening things up a little bit more, at least that's what I'm hearing. So um, yeah, I just, it might be a good thing that we have 25 players on our roster because they might be down five or six at a time. We don't do things right. So um, I don't know. I'm just, I, look, I'm so anxious and excited. Um, I don't want to sound doom and gloom, but I'm just pumped that we're a university that is going to get on the field. And that is exciting to me and to our players. So um do the right things. Do the right things. So speaking of the you know 2021 season that's coming up, I mean, obviously your roster looks rather insane, and I'm very excited to watch y'all play. Um, what can you tell us about yes. the talented group that you can work with? Jez. Yes. You're going to dog us this year? <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on, Patty. Got my girl next to you, she knows what's up. Jez, <laughs> hard one. She told you not to mess with her about her her iPad like, at the beginning. Like of the, I, she told you. I'm not gonna mess. She warned you. you know I love your returners. You know I love your 2020 class. That's pretty insane. But um, Allie, you go ahead and ask your question. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I love how you called Chet. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, I mean, Texas is going to be really good though. <laughs> And I know, I just, you know, what can you tell us about that talented group, um, you know, getting to work with them this upcoming season? Yeah, I am really excited. And I, I truly believe that uh, competition creates greatness. So we are going to be having some pretty dang good athletes at every position. And there's going to be some insane battling going on. And that I love, love, love. But I do think, and probably every program might agree, that you'll start to see a separation of those that love the competition and let's bring it on. And I'm not going to back down. I want this spot. And others that are like playing that, um, maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I don't deserve it. Or So um, you're going to have to be very tough-minded and uh, work your tail off but not be shaken, have that neutral thinking of, I'm not going to think I'm too good and I'm not going to think I'm not good enough. I'm just going to continue to grind and stay focused and because um, it's going to be a crazy battle. And the one thing that we did um, a little bit different, I, I kind of took my own executive decision on this, right or wrong, but we were allowed to play some fall games where we can uh, bus only. And um, I decided not to take that risk, not just for us, but also for football and our fall sports, because we don't want to mess them up either. But with 25 athletes, plus Sid Romero and Shay Knighton, who can get in the mix with us, because um, they're going to be our grad assistants, and um, we should have some pretty 
insane scrimmages. So um, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about these newcomers, man. They are talented. Mm -hmm. And so the hardest part for me is who's going where. And there's going to be some really, really good players that are sitting on the bench that I'm going to have to um, – I think you're going to see a lot of coaches – um, committee, you know, instead of here's my nine and I have, I have another 50 sitting on the bench, that's not <laughs> going to bode very well. So, um, I want to share the wealth and keep these guys engaged as much as I can, um, as long as they're prepared and ready for it. Yeah. What was, uh, obviously with 25 players returning, um, Every player from on your roster can earn a starting position on any team. Um, kind of like, what's your message for them going into this? Um, pretty much what I just kind of explained. Like, you're going to have to fight, and you're going to have to be a really good, solid team player. So if you don't like what's going on and you have an immature approach towards it, it's not going to help you. You don't want to miss a second on that field which is another message of make good decisions. So you can stay on that field. It's the first time someone might test positive, it'll take out your entire apartment group or dorm group or wherever you're living. And so there's going to be that whole situation too. And how people are going to be so upset if someone does the wrong thing. So, um, it's it's just being um, selfless, being team oriented. Do the right thing. As much as you want to go to that party, that pool party with a hundred people, think about your Giselle Juarez and your Jocelyn Allo and those kids that are a little bit older that are running out of time. Um, just you're going to be able to live life the way you knew it again soon enough but right now do it for your team do it for your team and that's that's the big message changing topics to to recruiting obviously that's been something that's been uh up and down throughout the, the whole summer going into the fall and um still in a dead period going into september at the end of september uh for for the recruits who are going through this experience where they're not seeing coaches uh they're not going to the tournaments that they normally would or just had a kind of pivot during the summer uh what's your adv best advice advice to them um going into the fall and then possibly the spring um Keep working, hang tight, because we'll be back. In the meantime, continue to work wherever and however you can. So this is a, a time of creativity. I mean, there are some kids that can't do anything, and then there's, like out in Oklahoma, they're playing high school softball right now. Um, everything's going on. So it's um, don't get discouraged. Don't, let, don't listen to a lot of people who think they know and they're telling you things like, well, you'll never get recruited by them. They're not paying attention or, you know, there's so many, um, I guess in the world, there's just all kinds of lies and what do you believe, what you don't believe and so forth. Um, stay true to what you know. If you're good enough, you'll get it. And coaches know that. I mean, you know how challenged I am already. Um, on media, imagine me trying to watch a <laughs> tournament on <laughs> an eight hour tournament. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't see anything. I can't hear anything. Um, so I don't think coaches are going to be making some, maybe they are, but personally, I'm not going to make any reckless decisions. Um, we're not in a rush. There's no rush right now. Um, so just keep positive mindset. You've got to keep a positive mindset and not let any of the negative stuff get in and just continue on, continue on. You have to. Don't get caught up in the, the naysayers. Just don't do that because it's, it's going to hurt you and set you back. So 
we're, we're going to get out there. Just, just let us get through this. We'll be there. I have a question for you that I know that you're going to have an awesome answer for. Um, oh. So I'm setting you up. <laughs> I'm setting you up here. Uh, what what hobbies or new talents have you developed during quarantine? Perhaps perhaps you've taken a computer s- programming uh, <laughs> course over <laughs> Patty codes <laughs> over quarantine. You are wrong about that. Okay, I have to stay as far away from it as I can. Obviously, um, hobbies. Well, okay, I cleaned. I did a phenomenal job on my grout in my kitchen. Phenomenal. <laughs> Hands and knees for about a week. It can you turn your camera work. around for us so we can take a look? No, because you may well. Maybe, <laughs> you don't, maybe you're saying that because you don't want to see me on the screen, but if I did that, you probably I would disappear and I don't know how, how to do that. Um, I would like to show you my, my yard work and my uh, blooming, and even in the hot weather, I'm keeping everything alive and blooming and um, I got yard of the month. Oh, congratulations! Month. Uh, is this something wow. that your is this something that your homeowners association does? Yes, they do, and they post a big sign right in the middle of your yard. It's so awkward, <laughs> embarrassing. Patty, let me ask you this: <laughs> Women's College World Series championship win <laughs> for homeowner association yard of the month. Which one is it? I work hard for both. Very hard. <laughs> Um, so, okay. In all honesty, I took the sign down. I, was, I, was, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to seem like I'm gloating. Like, yeah, look at my front yard. No, I took it down. I hit it. I put it behind <laughs> somewhere. Um, College World Series, no question. Um, we did purchase uh, um, a nice purchase um, in the way of a tritune. Take it out to Lake Texoma. Um, oh, my nice. grandkids are the happiest in the world. That is what I has brought the most joy to my heart is watching uh, my grandkids enjoy fun in the water and just we. When I before I decided to be a softball coach, I had some great old times either at the beach in SoCal or on the lakes and camping and water skiing and all of that, and then. Um, I went into college coaching and my life just went. <laughs> <laughs> Bo life is right where it's yeah. at, though. I, I think know. Jim Walton bought a boat. Yeah. He was enjoying it. I think it was. Yeah. 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 yeah Coach Walton bought a boat, was, too. It was a, a saving grace, really. Mm-hmm. Um, my son, younger son, got a, uh, the hitting coach job at the University of Utah. That was a big deal. For yeah, us and I'm, for him. I'm sure you're proud. I'm very proud. And in two week span, this guy's 25 years old, and he decided in a two week span to get his first job and get engaged. In two <laughs> weeks. Yeah, I don't want to hit the mute button because I won't know how to get. No, it. no, no. We're a, we're a dog friendly show. Hopefully, he <laughs> no, pops no. up in your lap. Um, okay. That's so, big stuff for a 25 year old. That's big. big. Stuff. So a little overwhelming for all of us, but happy. And he's sleeping on the floor in a new apartment in Utah because he has no furniture or anything. So <laughs> got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm happy for him, and I love the coaching staff there. I think it's going to be a great fit. And he's in a tough conference, and he knows it, but he's going to work very hard. He already has. So um, lots of changes, lots of of cool stuff happening. Yeah, Not that, sounds, doom and gloom. that sounds like a, a pretty good quarantine. I, I'm a little upset that Chez and I didn't get invited out to the boat, but we'll <laughs> leave that for another time. Uh, we'll talk if, about it that was Lake, if it was Lake Texas, Chez would be there. Because it's Lake <laughs> Texas, he won't come. I mean, so. Patty knows me. She does. I yes. do. <laughs> she does. I do. I do. 
Well, Patty, it was it was so great to to chat with you, and we're glad that you're you're keeping positive spirit out there, and um, look forward to seeing the Sooners uh, this upcoming Are season. Are you? Are you? Are I am. Look, you know, I'm going to be there for the for the Texas Oklahoma series. I wouldn't miss it, uh, and and watching the Sooners lose finally. <laughs> oh, those are fighting <laughs> words. Oh, man. I could call you out from the last time. I, I know. I will not. I will not. Yeah, I it's lost a bet. It's true. <laughs> I didn't even make you pay the bet. Did I? No, you did not. <laughs> you should cash that in. It's on tape. Everybody can see. Everybody knows now. Because <laughs> I remember Chess playing at Texas, and she was one of my favorite little players out there. Just a feisty, hard work, and in your face player. Yeah, I, I really, I really did like love watching Chess play. Aww. Gamer, thanks, Patty. I loved playing, uh, playing you guys. It was, it was no, by far my, it was my yeah. favorite series. It was my favorite series for sure. Well, Miss <laughs> Sarah's got my back. I that's... always have Boomer sooner, Patty. I got you. Balance. Got you. That's how we're balancing right here. There's <laughs> balance. I'm right in the middle, so we're all good. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Patty. And I think that's the deal. I think that's the deal. Mm -hmm. Patty gave us the whole deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to work on my computer skills, obviously. <laughs> Sign her up. Sign her up. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'm going to take a class. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're welcome for that session. Right. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. See you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. I don't even know how to turn this off. So I'm going to try. <laughs>